Now CSS is cascading style sheet and what that is is a text file that you can open up um, and we'll see what a cascading style sheet is and basically it's it's pretty straightforward really it tells the uh, the web page it means that, that if you've got a, um, a particular web page or even an entire site and you want to have something which is uh, universal throughout the site like the the type of body the type of caption the type of header you see how it goes normal external blah 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 the stuff you know style one style two um, title boxes um, all of these type of things are set in this cascading style sheet so um, it has this single reference that you can then just call to um, in a web page which allows uh, that web page to be consistent instead of rewriting it every time it's a bit like if you imagine you're working in an office, right? And somebody said to you, um, you know, you said, oh, what sort of envelope do we normally use to send out this um, uh, this file, you know, to someone? And uh, and someone says, oh, have a look in your left drawer, third, um, you know, file, and it'll show you the type of envelope at page 42, you know, in the book there. That's one way you could do it, right? And everybody would have that in their desk, you know. <coughs> the other way to do it would be to simply have a big chart up on the wall that says all envel all reports that look like this go in this kind of envelope. Do you see what I mean? And a cascading styling, a cascading style sheet is a bit like that. It's a big chart which all of the um, uh, web pages associated with that um, will can call on that and say, I'll oh, have a look on the wall and it'll tell you what kind of font we're using and, and everything else. <coughs> now, they're pretty much universal in all browsers now. They used not to be. Some browsers couldn't uh, use them. But these days, I think just about everybody, or well, certainly all of the main browsers will all are able to use that. Okay, look at this one. Photos JS. Now this is the reason we're here. So I'm going to drop that onto um, text edit and have a look at that. Now this is the same again kind of notion as a cascading style sheet. What it is, is that it's a, a little piece of, um, of, it's a little program. It's what's known or used to be known I don't know what they call it now, but it used to be known in programmers' language as a subroutine. In other words, if it's a routine, it's something that gets done that's that you insert into a set of other instructions. So you've got a whole bunch of instructions as to what to do, and then you've got a subset of instructions that you call on. So you might just call, like you might find nothing more than photos.js is called, in other words, in the main code of the page, photo. Uh, where's photo HTML? Uh, oh, we haven't got it here, of course. Um, it's in the next. It's in the folder beside it. Here it is. <coughs> so, um, so photos HTML will call this um, this particular one, which is photos Java JavaScript. Okay, now if you want to debug uh, and figure out what the hell is going on, if there's something wrong with this. Uh, this is where you start. You need to look at, at what's actually going on in here. See if it's calling the right files. Look to see if the <coughs> the files are there. You could, for instance, change... Look, it's got... Um, I'll get this right up here. Reflection height. Um, reflection offset. These are all factors. So caption height, 100. Full screen, 0. If I wanted to make it full screen, I could simply change that to 1, right? Bearing in mind that zero means no and, and uh, one means yes, usually. Um, so now I'm not going to take you through how you read this stuff because truth be known, I'm actually not very good at it. I used to write it years ago and I, I just basically don't know a great deal about it now. But there are sites about it that will teach you full JavaScript stuff. You can insert JavaScript in, uh, I suspect, as a widget, as HTML code. I'm not absolutely sure about that. Uh, could be wrong, but there may, there's certainly somebody will come up with a way of doing it, being able to insert JavaScript in, given that we can do that now, that it reads JavaScript. So um, 
this is with O8. So I reckon that that's the way to look at it. Uh, the other way, of course, is look at your media, right? So if you've got a problem with the quality of the media, have a look at something like this. So I'll give you an example. There's micro, thumb, and web. Okay, these are the three types of files of each each picture is made of, right? There's the micro, and that's bloody small, right? That's really small. I mean, if I zoom back, you can see here's the thumb, and uh, that ain't much bigger, right? And then there's the web, right? And now you can see that when you look at it, considering I'm, you know, what you're looking at here is a 20 inch screen, 20 inch monitor that I'm on. Um, you can see that even this is not terribly good, right? If I wanted to have a really good quality print out of that, I couldn't do it. Look how small it is. So that tells me straight away that I need to put a better source photo in if I want good quality, like printing off the site or whatever. Uh, okay, well, that'll do us, I reckon. It gives you some idea anyway. Email me if you've got any problems from the site, australianmac.com.